Welcome, welcome, family and friends, to what else? Maria loves to talk. How you guys doing? What have y'all been up to? You getting ready to go on those trips, getting ready to go on those cruises, weddings, baby showers, you know the whole nine yards, shopping in the mall, going to the gallery, or I don't know, maybe getting a new haircut, hair dye. I don't know, you guys. What am I talking about today, you guys? Unfortunately, I have to bring to you a sad, disturbing story. And like, you know, when I do most of these stories, I always try to look at how could this been avoided, could have been avoided, how could have been prevented, what should have been done. This story is going to take us to Olmstead, Ohio. Young mom, Margo Wood and her baby boy, I want his name is Julian Wood. Now I have seen a few other YouTubers uh, did their take their views, their opinions on it. Yes, they did a good job. I don't like to come to you guys all day long, three or four times a day a week talking about the same story. So I wanted to wait, get some more information as the story developed before uh, I come to you with the video. So I saw some new information today. And so I will share this with you. If you wanna know my views, my uh, viewpoints, my opinions, stay tuned. You know the drill, go get you some snacks. Come on back, let's get into this video. I will be showing a video, but first I wanna read from my favorite page, even before I came to YouTube. My favorite site to go for my news, the 411. Okay, so we're reading from the Daily Mail and I will show you a short clip as well. So here it says, and this is current, June the 12th updated. And I wanna say something about the uh, lady, um, the alleged, I don't know if we can call it alleged, the attacker. Bianca, and it's not B-I-A, but B-I-O, -B Bianca Ellis. Yeah, Bianca Ellis. Uh, all the pictures I've been seeing of this lady, she's got some type of grin, smirk. She looks like, remember Jack Nicholson from The Shining? She's got that weird, crazy look going on. And they did say she has a mental illness or schizophrenic or, or something to that nature. So here it says, judge reveals why he released Julian Woods suspected killer. So that's the word they use. So they're not saying alleged, they're saying suspected. Why he released a killer back on the streets just days before a toddler was stabbed in the parking lot. So he had, she had already been to court for something and they could have kept old girl or should i say shrek's sister free willy cousin yeah i went there okay so here it says um an ohio judge has defended his decision to release the woman accused of deleting three-year-old Julian Wood back on the streets just days before the fatal step and despite a referral, a referral to a mental health evaluation. I share with you on many occasions, okay, I did, that part of the problem or the person who is like the center of the confusion that holds all the pieces and puzzles who is playing God in a lot of these cases that we see, the judge, okay, yes, the judge. Bianca Ellis, 32, was arrested on May 29th for a parole violation related to shoplifting charge, stealing $69 worth of merchandise from a Walmart last year. So they're just getting her from last year. You guys, uh, y'all know how I do, because I'm long-winded. I always got something to say. Say y'all little butts from these stores. I'm not going to call the name. Go through that little self-checkout. Scanning one item. I've got to find something. Here, my little water. Scanning one item. Scanning two items. And then you, you get to your, your third and your fourth item, and you put it in your basket. Walmart 
H-E-B, Jovi's, Menards, Publix, Winn-Dixie, Kroger's, they have people in that back room and they are watching you. And they don't mind calling the cops and handcuffing you for a $5 or $10 item, okay? So here, let's get back to the stories. So as she faced the charges last month, a magistrate judge at the Rocky River Municipal Court, I thought it was going to say Rocky River Horror, uh, noticed that she seemingly became unresponsive and ordered her to be held for a mental health evaluation, according to records obtained by Fox 8. Fox 8 getting on the job. They're doing a good job reporting this. Okay, so, but, but, Judge Brian Hagan instead released Ellis back into the community on May 31st. Just three days later, police say Ellis st stole, stole, a knife from a thrift store and followed Julian and his mother to the parking lot of the Giant Eagle grocery store in North Olmstead, Ohio, where she fatally slashed the young boy in the face and neck and injured his mother. How? This is a this is a baby. He's a toddler. He didn't do anybody anything. I was just in the store the other day and a little child was was playing with me. Like, you know how they do the little hide and seek. And then I went a few feet further down the next aisle. A little child, he kept, hi, hi, hi. These are innocent babies. I don't even know how can anybody. But again, let's remember, she was not in her right frame of mind. And she stole a knife from the thrift store. So why did someone in the thrift store not stop her? I, I've worked, I share with you, I've worked many types of part-time jobs. I ain't ashamed, and I ain't ashamed to work certain jobs, okay? And we would have people stealing the little Miss, uh, what is it, Miss M jeans, um, little counterfeit coach purses, uh, a knife. There's no way she would have walked out of the Goodwill where I worked with a knife. Somebody would have uh, stopped her. Uh, uh, two or three of the men would have a knife. I saw the picture. I don't know if I can find it, post it. She's just walking casually with the knife face down to the ground. I saw a few people walking behind her. Uh, I'm just going to keep it real. Where was Karen? Because normally, Karen is all over the place, getting people in trouble, getting on the phone, calling the police, uh, looking for security. She's confronting the people. But today, for that day, Karen, Chad, Brad, they wasn't nowhere around. They could have saved the day right there. Yeah, I went there. Still, Hagen said he would not have done anything differently. Even now, knowing that Ellis is charged with aggravated murder for the death of the tower. So he real bold and beside himself. And I just keep looking at this smirk. Girl, dude, y'all guys, that smirk on this girl's face. On this big old free wheelie, um, trick looking uh, chick. She just got a smirk. And you can tell. Uh, I don't know if anybody have taken psychology 101, 102, 234, I, I don't know, or been to one of those places, clinics, but the doctors will tell you that's how they know when a person is not, you know, the saying, um, the eyes, what is it, y'all know, help me out, help me out, the eyes is the window to your soul, you can see her eyes is off, so that tell you right there. Uh, I don't know if the mother didn't realize this this heifer was walking behind her. I don't know if, if you know, maybe she turned around or seen her and maybe could have made a difference. But this judge is really working my nerves right now. So he's saying here, he noted that the organization handling mental health evaluations had nobody available. And he thought it would be unjust for Ellis to sit in jail for days on a minor charge. He thought it would be unjust. It wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be fair 
to have this innocent, innocent little damsel in distress sitting in jail. I'm confident in the way the court handled the matter, Hagen told Fox A. We did it by the letter of the law. There was nothing there to, to send up alarms. There wasn't any red flags shooting up that pole, he said, explaining that there were no signs of mental distress, no signs of previous violence act, but it has since been re revealed that Ellis had a criminal record going back several months and three different Oh my gosh. Three different states. Now, y'all, I'm going to keep it real. We work, got two little part-time jobs. Everybody work. Ain't nobody done have funds where we are able to go visit. We ha I haven't been on a trip of vacation in I don't know how many moons. I, I'm, I'm just really kind of in awe how someone who is mentally off, not sound, not working, no job, I don't know if she's on Social Security, uh, able to travel to all these different states and, and everywhere she go, allegedly, she's causing problems. You may never understand why a woman allegedly stabbed a three-year-old boy and his mom at Giant Eagle on Monday, but we do know the alleged attacker had been arrested in that same area four days before that. Police have released a video of that arrest. Dan DeRose joining us now with that. And police have to really investigate all of this, Dan, as they try to get justice for this family. And people may ask at home, why are we continuing this story? It's because there are so many questions. Who is this person? How could it be done at random and that with no uh, uh, association with the mom or that three-year-old little boy? Who is Bianca Ellis? We know that the attack happens right here in North Olmstead in the Giant Eagle parking lot, but it's four days prior. So we're talking last Monday that right here on this corner, it's actually this corner right here out front of the Walmart, that police have an interaction with Bianca Ellis. She is in a wheelchair. She can walk herself in her wheelchair. Someone has called 911 saying uh, she looked like she may need some help. Officers find her on the sidewalk there, have an interaction with her. They get her ID, but it turns out she has a warrant for her arrest. Now, you're about to watch this in, uh, interaction with police. Uh, you can judge for yourself. Uh, I've seen hundreds of arrests on tape, and this one seems to be fairly routine. Hello. Hi. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm going over here to the bus stop. Are you, you're okay, though. Somebody called because they were concerned about you. Yeah, I kind of I kind of uh, get lightheaded from my medicine. 5221, I'm out. You, do you need assistance at all? Or you need an ambulance or anything? Are you feeling all right? No, I think the temperature is just getting to be just right. Okay. Uh, do you have an ID on you just so I can tell them that you're all right? Thank you. Copy. All right, Bianca, you know you got warrants. Girl, I don't know. They're oh, probably for here, yeah. Yeah, so we got to check on those, all right? You got anything crazy on you? No guns, knives, no, drugs, no. bombs, no. nothing like that? No. All right, I'm going to cuff you in the front, okay? That's fair? Go ahead and face me for a second. Right here. Thank you, ma'am. I'll pinch you. As you saw, she went willingly, uh, didn't interact with police in any strange way. She was taken into custody. She was transported to where uh, that warrant was out of. It was a probation violation warrant. She hadn't completed a class on a theft charge, and that's why she had a warrant out for arrest. It wasn't anything violent, but it is that interaction with police on Thursday, right here, that brings her back to the police department, which is right here on Monday, you're going to see that in new video just released today. A little bit of strange behavior at the police station just a half an hour before the attack at Giant Eagle. That's coming up at 4. Nikki. Outraged Northeast Ohio, the murder of a child at a local supermarket. Here, what we have now learned about the suspect, I-Team reporters, Peggy Gallick and Ed Gallick are here now with much more tonight. That's right. The suspect's mother blames mental illness and doctors and the courts not doing enough to help. And the suspect's mother also has a message, a message for the family of the child killed.
everyone asking, how could she do it? Bianca Ellis charged with attacking a toddler and his mother with a knife outside the Giant Eagle in North Olmsted, killing little Julian Wood. So we spoke to the mother of Bianca Ellis. What do you think actually happened at that moment last week in this case? I think she was hallucinating. Bianca has been on several medications that did not work out for her. The hallucinations and the voices just got the best of her. Just do whatever you can to keep this monster behind bars. This week, little Julian's father called Bianca Ellis a monster. Her mother understands the outrage. In fact, she told us she is getting death threats. My condolences to this family. When I found this out, I was so devastated because no child should, should lose their life. She was around my grandchildren. It could have been one of my grandkids. New video released to the I team shows Bianca Ellis just before the murder. Police say she stole a knife from a store. You can see her do it, even with other people around. This week, the I team revealed Bianca Ellis kept getting back on the streets, even though she had been picked up for violating probation. She had told Cleveland police that she wanted to kill someone, and she had more trouble far away. We have revealed that in recent months, Ellis has been charged with three counts of assault in California and a count of trespassing in Florida. Her mother tells us she has no idea how her daughter even traveled. In California, in Bakersfield, and in Florida... Wow. We also talked about what happened days before the murder. Bianca Ellis got released from jail, even though a magistrate had called for a mental health check. A Rocky River judge let her go. He's told us he didn't see anything to indicate she would turn violent. What would you do differently handling this case or even next time? Nothing. I'm confident in the way that the, the court handled this matter. I didn't think they looked into it. Yolanda Eggleton told us she believes the court system and the mental health system failed both her daughter and the family of Julian Wood. This won't be the last time, and it's so sad and so tragic that a baby had to lose their life, an innocent baby. A report shows Ellis also claimed that she killed someone in California, but police there tell us that claim was not credible. We also called Ellis's attorney on this case. He told us he's not ready to talk about it. You know, uh, what's interesting is hearing from the mother, of course, and it, I, I mean, she even questions the, the judge that you had contacted. Right, and we've tried to ask new questions of that judge as we've learned more about this case. We've sent emails and left messages over the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. He has not responded. Another chapter today. Little chair thing with her little suitcase going somewhere, uh, which I've always been kind of like apprehensive when I see these people in them wheelchair. She in a wheelchair. But you're out walking, looking for a victim in the thrift store and go to the parking lot and, you know, like, like a predator, like one of them lions, you know, looking or hyenas looking for their prey. One of them big old, you know, snakes in the, the jungle seeing their prey looking to, but here, to this little, you know, docile, um, innocent, handicapped, disabled woman in a wheelchair. Yeah, I went there. And one month in jail for trespass, and then on May 29, police found her uh, trundling to the bus stop in a wheelchair. Discovered that she had a warrant for her arrest. As she was taken into custody, police body camera footage showed her almost dancing as she excitedly proclaimed, I'm getting a free ride. I'm getting a free ride. But why are you in a wheelchair? If you can walk and dance, what are you in a wheelchair? That's what ticks me off when I go to these stores. I'm just keep it real. When I go to places, whether it's Walmart, Kroger, um, what's the other place? And I see these people. Sometimes it's the whole family in one of those scooter wheelchairs. The whole family, the mama, the husband, the grandma. One time I saw a couple of months ago, it was some girls, I think they said they were from South Carolina. It was, at first it looked like it was two of them. Then I look around, it was five. And then I look around, it was seven girls, young black girls, early in the morning, like not even quite 10 o'clock, all with those electric scooters, just driving and playing car, car, whatever with each other. And everybody was just looking like, like 
what is this? What is, how did they get, we got old people come through the store, especially when I'm just minding my business, people be like, can you help me, ma'am, find a, a thing? I'm thinking, ma'am, I'm shopping just like you. I'll be, but hey, I don't know, 25 years, I might be in that, you know, as an elderly person. But yeah, uh, I've always was like, leery those people in the car. Uh, they keep giving these criminals, heathens, so many chances, so many chances. And the people that need to give chances to, they don't. I'm just going there. Jared Wood, father of the deceased, husband of Margo. Your Honor, that day, one week ago, she took everything from us. There's nothing that could ever replace my son or anything that my wife and I, even our other kids, are going. At that point, Ellis defense attorney suggested that she has notable mental health issues. That's true. But just a few moments later, Wood's grieving father, Jared Wood, pleaded for the judge to do everything you can to keep this monster behind bars. And prosecutors announced they would seek the death penalty. I got a problem with that. And I'm gonna keep it 100. You know the woman's got mental issues. You know she's a cray cray. You know she's schizo or whatever. You can't give somebody like that the death penalty. Y'all didn't give it to the other people. Andrea Yates, Texas Clear Lake, killed five kids. Okay. Um, 
Susan Smith, I don't think she was ever really put crazy, but she killed her two kids and said a black man did. She was just evil. Got Dylan Roof. I don't think that they probably was probably trying to give him the mental. He evil. He killed them nine or eleven black people in South Carolina church, sat there for a whole hour when he could have walked away. Then you got Patrick Crusas. Uh, sounds like he's Greek. El Paso Walmart shooter. Shot all those Hispanic people. August of 2019, he killed 23, deleted 23 people, injured 22. They did give him, I want to say life. He did get life. But there's another guy, and I, I knew there was another one. They were like back to back with a shooting here in Texas. Uh, Santa Fe school shooter. His name is, Dem all I know is Demetrios. Uh, he killed 10, injured 13. He's been at the North Texas Hospital. He has been deemed mentally incompetent. Okay, so that's what Bianca is. She needs to be in whatever the mental hospital in Ohio, uh, mentally incompetent. No, don't. I don't see her. Um, and I know the father is her. He's mad. He's upset. He wanna get in there with his nagging baseball bat or, or Lucille baseball bat and go up against her head or something, but yeah. Okay, so police say Ellis first encountered Julian and his mother, Margo, 37, as they were exiting Giant Eagle grocery store and followed them outside to their car, brandishing a knife and had allegedly stolen from the nearby Volunteers of America thrift store. Where's the security guard that's supposed to be walking around the parking lot? Where is the security guard that should have been at the volunteers or someone watching the cashier, the people that be hanging up the clothes? We were all taught that we're all supposed to be on the lookout when we see something that's not right. Somebody just walking in the store. What? Also, I want to know, why did she get anybody at the thrift store? That would have been, she's still in the night there. That would have been the place. But I guess she knew that's how these devils they smart like that. They sneaky and smart like that because she knew there were several big old grown men in there that could have. And this old girl, this old gal, when you got, when they have these mania, this panic, this paranoia, I have saw, I've seen on TV where the police would say these people have a heightened sense and they become like the Hulk. She already looked almost like the home, but they actually have this strong power that they can overfight, they can fight two or three people. So yeah, it would have taken about two or three men to tackle. That one little woman wouldn't have been able unless she would have grabbed her child and just ran. And then if the child is tied or however secure, that would have been hard. Y'all, I don't know. This is just the devil's in the details. She then allegedly stabbed the toddler in the face and the back as she sat, as he sat in the shopping cart, then slashed his mother as she tried to pull her child to safety. This is Cleveland 19. Ellis was found just a few minutes later walking down a nearby side street. Just look at her. She's just walking like, you know, she just. You know, not doing anything, not a care in the world, y'all. They said she's still holding a bloody knife. She had no previous connection with the Wood family. Authorities say calling the attack entirely a random act of violence. Random act of violence. And I mean, she close on this woman. She left the thrift store, went into the grocery store. I see two lawsuits. I see three lawsuits. The thrift store the grocery store, and whoever the security that's supposed to be uh, monitoring that parking lot area. And then the the, the judge, uh, I forgot what his name, he needs to be unseated. He shouldn't be reelected, and they need to put a, a, a suit out on him. He needs to be disbarred. Yeah, I went there. Ellis' mother, that's the, the crazy woman, Bianca Mama, Yolanda Eggleton says she feels for the Wood family and was shocked when she heard the news. I want to go back to Mama. If she was around your kids, your grandkids, her nieces and nephews, why you didn't attack them? I, don't, I mean, she, I don't want her to attack nobody, but you around them, why, why didn't she get them? 
I'm still, why does she attack one of the cashiers at the thrift shop? You was in the grocery store. Why you didn't get one of them people? In the, all these chances, nobody saw somebody, some big old Shrek looking free willy girl, half a walk around with a knife. Ain't nobody saw that as concerning. 